Welcome back to another episode of the building series and in today's video our buildings well some of them are going to be snapping well I placed that one wrong but as you can see if we look in the correct areas now this wants to snap with that one but our foundation is snapping next to one another as you can see and the same thing goes for our floors as well they are snapping nicely next to one another and this way we can create some nice uh, some nice floors so yeah let's get started so the first thing that we are going to need is a interface which will allow us to communicate with the buildables so that we don't have to cast to every single one of them rather we can just use interface and that will help us to communicate with all three of these and even more later on uh, without having to cast to any of those so let's go ahead blueprint uh blueprint interface let's call this build interface so let's rename the default function to be return boxes and this is going to return as the collision boxes which will tell us where to snap the next buildable to basically it's going to give us the location uh, we don't need any input but we do need an output so that this is a function and uh, it would return as these boxes and i'm going to call this just boxes and i will use the box collision for that and make sure to set this into an array because we are going to return multiple boxes so for this video that's going to be it we don't need anything else in this interface but later on we will need something now real quick um okay let's start with the buildables themselves let's open up our floor open full blueprint editor let's select the class settings and let's add this interface that we just created so let's call this build interface so now if we compile and save this under the interfaces section now we have this function available to us so now we need to create these boxes that we can then return so let's go to the view of port and let's go ahead and let's create some box collisions so i'm going to add a box collision now my shape my my floor and basically all of the other default buildables are 400 by 400 units so what i will want to do is select this box and i will want to move this to minus 400 in one of the x or y axis then i'm going to duplicate this and move the other one to the positive 400 like this let's add some more let's bring this to zero minus 400 let's duplicate this once more and let's make this into a positive 400 so it should be like this so depending on your size you need to move it that many units to the side and also make sure that your buildables have the pivot point right in the middle of them at the uh, ground level otherwise well this is going to cause some issues now in my situation only partially this object will be above ground and most of it is going to be uh, below ground because if we look at the the default pivot point if we add a plane and we leave it at zero and if we stretch it out so imagine that this is going to be the floor and this is going to be my buildable so the very base is going to be quite high but once we have this as a like the second third fourth fifth floor uh, floor then it's going to look a lot better but for the ground level this is going to be good enough and mostly for the ground level well we're going to be using the uh, foundation instead so now our camera line trace have to be looking inside uh, at this box in order for it to tell the position now what is very important is that you don't change the rotation and scales on this for the for the walls we're going to change the rotation but the, the scale always must remain at one so that it takes the same size that it needs for the buildable otherwise the floor or whatever you're going to be building is going to be stretched out it's going to be way too huge now these boxes right here by default are obviously are way too small to detect we want to have like a large surface area that we can detect so just hold select the bottom one hold shift select the top one it's going to select all of them and now you can change the box extent so you can change this to whatever you want you can make this as big as you want this will not change the buildables size this will change the size of the interaction area so my object is 400 by 400 so these i'm going to make 200 by 200 in the x and y axis now if i leave this box sticking above the floor that means that it will allow me in the future to stack these on top of one another and that's not what we want we don't want these piling up so i'm just going to change the z to just one 
and it's going to be below and it's going to be just fine. We're not going to be able to detect this on my specific mesh. Now, the Z axis doesn't really matter because as long as it's a large surface area, it's all fine. We don't really need a Z axis in this specific example. We're going to need a Z axis in the walls. So this is how it will look. Now, let me go to the return boxes now and let's return these boxes uh, through our interface. So we are going to make an array since we're going to return multiple elements and we are going to return four elements. So four of these boxes. So let's bring them in and just simply connect all of them like so. There we go. So once we have done that, I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the foundation. So again, class settings, add a build interface, go to the viewport, add a box collision, move this to 400 in the X, duplicate, minus 400 in the X, another duplicate, 0 X 400 Y, and minus 400 Y. There we go. Now I'm going to select all of these boxes, change the box extent to be 200 by 200. And in this specific example, now this piece is quite low. Uh, well, these collision boxes. So what I'm going to do with these ones is actually I'm going to extend these to maybe even like 100. So it's quite close. So it's not like our player has to really look down, but rather just a little bit forward. So this could actually even go up until like this area right here would be pretty good. Obviously, it totally depends how you want this to be. So if you feel like it's pretty hard to find this position and make it lock in the position, then make sure to maybe make it a little bit bigger. So, but again, no changing of the scaling. That's a no, no, just the box extent. The box extent can go as high as you want. Now again, return boxes, make an array, and let's provide all four of these boxes. The order doesn't matter. It's not too important. It's important that we just return all of them. Here we go. So we have that stuff done let's go ahead and let's open up our build component now and let's try to detect these boxes so for that we're going to need a new function and i'm going to call this function detect build boxes now uh for this we are actually going to need two more variables that we don't have so to make life a little bit easier we can open up our build cycle and inside of our build cycle from the hit result, we can grab our hit actor, promote that to a variable. There we go. And the same goes for the hit component, because we want to know what is the actor that we have hit and which of its component we have hit, because we're going to hit our foundation and we're going to hit one of these boxes and we want to know which one that is. So on the branch, on the true, whenever we have hit something, let's go ahead and let's set these up. So let's do it like this. There we go. Maybe a little bit of a rerouting. And can't seem to hit that. There we go. So that is better. Now, let's go back to our newly created function, detect build boxes. And over here, what we are going to do is we're going to look for our uh, interface function that we created, which we called return boxes. So over here, we can just now look return boxes and it's going to return us the message. Now we need the message since we have this interface in our project the message is going to be available throughout the entire project it doesn't matter where you are but the function itself is going to live inside of the actors now we're going to call that function and we need to specify a target we have hit some kind of an actor so let's try to talk to that ac actor and see what kind of collision boxes does he have so let's loop through all of them with a break so that we wouldn't loop uh, if we find one so that we would stop the loop and now let's go through every single one of those uh, one of those collision boxes and let's check if that specific one box that we are looking at right now is equal to the hit component, the component that we have actually hit. Now let's do an if from there, see what it returns. And if that is true, let's go ahead and let's create ourselves a local variable and let's call this local found. And we can now grab this variable and on true, we can set this to be true and we can go ahead and break the loop now. There we go. So it's going to go through all of the boxes that the actor has returned and it's going to tell us whether that uh, one of those boxes is the same one that we have actually hit. So from the whoops, 
not what I wanted to do. So from the completion of this, what we want to do is we just simply want to return. We want to add a return node. And what we want to do is we want to return the local found. So let's connect that. I'm just going to delete the local and one. It's going to be just found. And also another thing that we want to do is we want to get the hit component and we want to get its world location so that we know actually world transform, get world transform. Here we go. So that we know where we need to snap the next build. So let's plug that in. And I'm just going to call this transform. There we go. So that's it for this function. As simple as that. Now we got to implement this function inside of our build cycle. So let's go to our build cycle. Let's move all of these nodes back. And actually, let's move this aside. Let's disconnect it entirely. And I'm going to move these two to over here. And up here from the where we have hit something, if the build ghost is valid, then we can check, uh, try to detect some of these boxes. Maybe we have hit one of them. So we're going to do an if to see what it returns. And if it returns true, then we can set our build transform to be the transform from the box that we have hit. So it's essentially going to return us the world position for that specific box. And it's going to tell our system, hey, build over here, place the preview over here. So we're going to be able to build in that specific locked position. Now, the next thing is making the build ghost green. So let's replug this, give build color and make sure that the green is true because we are allowed to build in that position. Now from the false route, we just simply skip the build transform set node and we go directly in over there in the set uh, give build color. So I rerouted this a little bit. Now, after we are done with this again, let's grab our build delay and let's plug that in so that this is a infinite loop so that it, it keeps on looping and looping and looping. So now that we have done this, we're going to have our last issue, which is uh, we are using different trace channels for different buildables right now. So if we would go to our buildable database, we have our traces set up for different buildables, different traces. So what we want to do now is actually uh, block these specific trace channels and ignore some other ones. So for these two, this is going to be super simple. We want to select our all of our collision boxes, scroll down till we find the collision settings. We want to change those to custom and we want to ignore everything except for that one specific trace. So this is the floor. So we're going to be using the floor trace. So we want to grab our floor trace and block that. Now for our foundation, pretty much the same thing. Scroll down, change the collision preset to custom, ignore everything in this case, except for the foundation trace. There we go. So now if we would hit play, place this down, you will see that these are snapping whenever we're looking over there, over there or over there. There we go. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, now the same thing is going to work for our floor. The floor is also going to snap the same way. As of right now, the, the walls are not going to snap in the same way, but about the walls, we're going to talk in the next video. And we are also going to add some more with the door and uh, window holes as well. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you found this useful. If you did, then know there is a lot more to come. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I see you in the next one.